Hey kindergarten, it is Mrs. Shervani from the Syracuse Academy of Science and Citizenship. So I am very excited to read our next listening and learning story to you. We have worked so hard to learn different ways that we can take care of the earth. And yesterday we learned about pollution and we read specifically about land, air, and water pollution. And today we're going to learn a little bit more about air pollution because it's something that's really important for us to be aware of. And at the by the end of our story today, you will be able to write why air pollution is bad for your lungs and then draw and label one place that air pollution comes from. And I think that you guys will, I think you guys probably already know the answer to that second question, where air pollution comes from, because we did learn a little bit about that yesterday. So you probably had a little head start on that one. Now, before I start our story, I've got to tell you guys once again how much I love seeing your responses. Some students send me emails of what they are drawing and creating after listening to these stories. Some students turn things in on Classroom Dojo. One student even sent me a video on Classroom Dojo. Some other students email me videos and parents are sending me pictures on Class Dojo. It's incredible. Incredible. Please keep sending them in because I love, love seeing and hearing what you guys are taking away from these stories. It really is important to me and it means a lot to me. So keep doing that. I'm so, so proud of you. All right. So today we are going to learn about air pollution and listen carefully to, to figure out how we can work together to reduce the air pollution because there is a few things that we can do to help the air pollution. Oh, okay, Earth is going to come read to us. You ready? Let me try and get to our next story here. Oh, okay. Good old Earth here again. I had an artist friend of mine make this drawing. Why do you think I'm coughing in this picture? Of course, I don't really need to breathe. Not like you people and animals do. And I don't actually cough either. Sometimes though, I do wish that I could cough just to get rid of some of the air pollution that has collected in the skies. Air pollution is a very serious problem. And it's something that affects the whole planet. Fortunately, it's a problem that can be solved. However, it's not going to be solved unless people pitch in and do their part to keep the air clean. Even you can help. So pitching in just means that everybody does a little bit so that we work together as a team to do a lot. If everyone does a little, it turns into a lot. Do you guys know what part of the body this is right here? These are your lungs. Air pollution can cause health problems for people. You have lungs inside your chest. And this illustration shows you what lungs look like. Each time you inhale or breathe, your lungs fill up with air like balloons. And when you breathe out or exhale, the air leaves your lungs. So you breathe in, inhale, and out, exhale, out. Those are good ways to calm down if you're feeling a big emotion too, huh? If there is pollution in the air you breathe, then each time you inhale, the pollution enters your lungs. And over time, this can cause health problems. The more polluted the air, the more pollution you will breathe in. And the fact is, dirty, polluted air is bad for people's lungs and it can make you sick. Not so good. Here's a picture of a big American city. Let's take a close look at it. 
if you look at the background where these large buildings are, you can see that the air looks kind of foggy back here. Look even closer beyond the city and you can see a thin brownish yellow strip of air just below the light blue sky. That's air pollution or smog, which floats over the top of the city. I see it, do you see it? Air pollution creates global problems. That means that smog and other forms of air pollution can cause problems all over the earth, or as some people call me, the globe. In other words, the places that create a lot of air pollution, like those big cities with lots of cars and factories, are not the only places that are harmed or hurt by air pollution. Air pollution is carried by the wind to other places, and it floats high up into the atmosphere, higher than the highest airplanes can fly, but it doesn't just float off to space. Instead, it collects in the sky. But luckily, there is a lot that you can do in your home, school, and town to help solve this problem. And here comes another big R word, responsibility. That's right. If people want to make sure that the air is clean, then it's their responsibility to learn how they can help. Ooh. Responsibility is one of Mrs. Shervani's favorite words, too. It is super important to be a responsible citizen, and this is one way you can be responsible. Being responsible means that you have certain things that you have to do, like I have to be responsible to do my laundry as an adult so that I have clean clothes. I have to be responsible to get groceries so that there's food in my house. I have to be responsible to get gas when I need to drive in my car. So being responsible is taking care of the things that you need to do. And it's very important to Ms. Shirwani too, I hear. Next. One of the most amazing things about people is that you have figured out how to make and use electricity. You use it for so many things, including light bulbs, which you turn on and off with light switches. Televisions, refrigerators, air conditioners, computers, and so much more are also plugged in to these outlets. You might have heard that too much television is bad for your brain, but I bet you didn't know that it's bad for the air too. Why? Because when you watch TV, you use electricity and using electricity can add to air pollution, even though you can't see anything in going into the air. Yeah. What do you see in this picture? Mm, well, first that's a really big train, right? A very big train. And this is coal. Do you remember when we learned about mining coal? When we read about blacksmiths and the colonial towns? I remember that. So this train is carrying lots and lots and lots of coal, which is one of the most important natural resources in the world. Coal is a type of rock that people dig up out of the earth. And in some places, people burn coal to produce or make energy. Cool. Energy from burning coal can be used to make electricity. This is a picture of a coal-fired power plant. But coal-fired power plants can generate large amounts of air pollution. So this is a factory. It's not a plant like this kind of green plant that you would see outside. A plant could also be another word for a factory. And this factory uses coal to make electricity. So do you see these large electrical lines right here? Every time someone turns on a light, a computer, or another electric appliance, there's a chance that electricity is coming from a power plant just like this. 
And as a result, a little more pollution gets added into the air. But when you turn the lights off, you don't add any pollution. And it's a simple thing that everybody can do to help reduce air pollution. That's something that I could do better in my home because I have a habit of leaving lights on when I've left a room. And it is really important to make sure that you turn them off when you leave the room because it also saves your, your parents money and with their electric bill, it saves them a little bit of money as well. And it's also not creating so much air pollution. So that's something I'm gonna try to do a little bit better. Now let's take a look at this. Ooh, do you know what this is? This is the tailpipe of a car and is another big cause of air pollution. Every time someone starts a car, that car lets air pollution out of the engine through the tailpipe. The pollution that comes out of the tailpipe is called exhaust. It comes out right here. Hmm. So what exactly is car exhaust and how does it pollute the air? Let's see. What's this person doing? They're pumping gas. This is not a chore that I love to do so much. Gas is extremely useful or gasoline, you might call it. People use it in their cars, in their trucks, in their buses, boats, airplanes, lawnmowers. Every day, people around the world use millions and millions of gallons of gasoline. A car's engine burns gasoline, which gives it power. When a driver steps on the gas, he or she presses down that gas pedal on the bottom of the car, which is on the floor of the car. That sends more gasoline to the car's engine and makes the car go. But when gasoline burns like coal, it creates air pollution. With millions of cars driving around letting out exhaust, the pollution really starts to add up. The more cars and the bigger those cars are, the more air pollution they create. That's why it's a good idea that when you're able to, you can walk or ride a bike and that will cut down on some of the air pollution that we have. And like we talked about yesterday, right now, since people are staying in their houses because of the virus and they're not really traveling as much as they normally do, the air is a lot cleaner and a large part of that is because the exhaust isn't coming out of the cars like it typically does. So the air is cleaner outside right now, which is a positive. All right, the earth will see you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> I love to be silly with you guys. So that was a good story. I learned a lot of facts about air pollution, and I honestly never would have thought that little old me could do something to take care of the earth. And create and reduce the air pollution. Hmm. So a few questions for you, and then we'll jump back and see if we can answer our main goal for the day. So um, air pollution, the earth told us, is a global problem. That means that it's happening all around the world, not just in Syracuse, New York, where we live. It's happening all around the world. So where, um, why? Is this happening all around the world? Why? Hmm. Well, I remember the earth saying that the wind blows that dirty air from one big city to another big city to another big city and to all across the globe. So that's why it's happening. The wind can't really, well, it can be stopped, but it can move through different towns and countries and continents even. So that's why. What can people like you and me do so we don't have to drive our cars so much, which causes air pollution? What could we do? Well, we could walk when we can. We could ride a bike when we can. Um, you could carpool, which means like if two people are going to the same 
the same place. You could drive with each other instead of each taking your own car. That's a way that you can cut down a little bit when it's safer to be closer together, right? Not right now during the virus. You want to stay with just your family. But when we're allowed to go back outside and when things are better again, that's something that you could do, right? Okay, back to our goal. What part of the body do you breathe with? Your lungs, right? So why is air pollution so bad for your lungs? That was our main question. Do you remember? Air pollution affects your lungs because if you breathe in dirty air, it gets into your lungs and it can make you sick. That's why air pollution is bad. And do you remember a couple of different places where air pollution comes from? Remember, I want you to draw and label one. Well, you're seeing it right here, right? And then we also saw the air pollution comes from factories like this and the electricity. So those are two places that it can come from. All right, kiddos. I can't wait to see your responses today. I know that they're going to be so good and I love, love seeing them. So keep working hard. I'm so proud of you all. And tomorrow we will be back with a very interesting story from Willie the Water Drop. And he's going to tell us all about the water cycle which is very interesting. I'm excited to see the water cycle. And I think I'll have a little dance for you too. I can't wait. Bye guys.